Before we get into the actual video itself, I need to give a huge thank you to my lovely and patient girlfriend, Jessica. She was the reason we are even able to make a video like this. Not only did she spend the entire weekend taking videos of me, but she also helped with the managing and trying to figure out where we need to go. And she pushed me to get a lot of the cool stuff that's in this video. So without her, this wouldn't be possible. Thank you, Jessica. I love you. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Red Seat Radio. My name is Corbin. This is an extra special edition of Red Seat Radio. For those of you who weren't around last year, basically what this video is going to be is I'm going to be taking you along for the entirety of Winter Weekend, recording everything that I do during Winter Weekend, talking to anyone I talk to at Winter Weekend. Basically, you're going to experience everything I experience over the next couple of days, and this one should be really interesting based on everything that's happened this offseason, so I'm excited to get down there and get going, but before we do, make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new here, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well. Helps these videos out a ton, and it would mean a lot to me. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one. Let's get after it. Okay, so we've officially gotten to Springfield in lieu of winter weekend. We just sat down, had a meal, unpacked everything, all good to go. Mass Mutual Center is literally just right over here. We're going to head over and go to the welcome event. This is where they introduce the players. This is where we get the Papelbon stuff. This is also where we're going to get Craig Breslow and Sam Kennedy on the stage for the first time this offseason. That should be really interesting. Jessica, do you have anything to add? Nope, I'm just really excited. We're going to head over there now. Come along with us. All right, so welcome into the official start of this vlog. You got the intro. You know where we are. We're at this opening ceremony, which was very similar to last year. They introduced the players. They introduced the coaches. They had Craig Breslow, Sam Kennedy, and a couple of former players on as well, all hosted by John DePapon, which, as you'll see through these clips, was very, very interesting. I'm going to be overlaying my voice onto some of this just to explain some stuff to you guys, but basically what we're going to be seeing over the next couple of minutes is interviews from players, owners, everything as well. Hopefully you guys enjoy, and I will see See you guys after the show. After the intros were all said and done, they brought out manager Alex Cora, Trevor Story, and Tristan Casas. One of my biggest takeaways is that Tristan Casas is really developing into a true leader of this team really, really quickly. I'm going to put some clips in here about him answering some questions as well as Cora and Story. What you do over at 162 and what you do in the tour. And uh, I think in our situation, now if you look what we have done or we have not done the last few years, if you look back, you know, we were one game back at the train of the deadline two years ago. We were two games back at the deadline last year. We didn't finish the job. You know, we didn't finish the job. In 2008, we did finish the job. You know, we, we, we kept going. And uh, in 21, we finished the job. And that's something we've been talking about as a group. 
you know, regardless of what people think outside the walls of Fenway Park, we believe we, are, we have a talented team. We're not going to be afraid to play to talk about October. So that's just a quick snippet of what Alex Cora and Trevor Story and Tristan Casas were talking about. They then decided to bring out both Sam Kennedy and Craig Breslow at once. This was met with some applause, mostly boos. To be honest with you, I'll throw in a clip of the boos in here as well. And I'm not going to go through and play clips of everything they said, mostly because I don't want to get copywritten. But either way, a lot of what Sam Kennedy said was basically the exact opposite of what he was telling the press in their presser before going on. That did not go very well for Red Sox and Red Sox fans especially because at this day and age you already know what they said before it felt like a bunch of just nothing and i talk about this a little bit later but i wasn't exactly impressed with what they had to say during this segment uh, young star players that have always contributed to our red sox championships and marrying them up with the right veterans the right free agents at the right time for it. and we know we put you through a lot in these last five years and we hear you we take it personal and we do not want to be sitting up here uh, with rumors and anger. I mean, yeah, clearly fans were upset. They had every right to be. Next up was Jason Veritek, Pedro Martinez, David Ortiz talking about the memory of Tim Wakefield. In my opinion, this was by far and away the best part of this opening ceremony. I think they honored Tim really, really well in this one. I apologize for the glare on the screen here. I have no idea how that happened with a camera, but either way, this was absolutely incredible hearing these guys talk about what Tim meant to them and to Red Sox Nation. This just about wrapped up the evening. All right, so we just finished up the intros here everything going on it was it was really interesting Die the Pablon absolutely stole the show uh you had many crown royals during that set and it could it showed and it was a uh, it was honestly a lot of fun I think it was cool hearing from Alex Cora Tristan Casas specifically really showed up big time in this one I think everything he said was the right thing Alex Cora's praise of Tristan Casas was incredible what I will say and I know the thing everyone's looking for you've seen the booze in this video of Sam Kennedy and to some degree Craig Breslow as well. I don't know if their segment and comments lived up to basically what everyone was hoping we were going to get during winter weekend, right? We understood there wasn't going to be a show and tell or an ask or whatever it was last year, but we were expecting at least something in terms of sustenance for these fans who traveled all the way to Springfield. There was some of it and there was some good stuff in here, but I think they I think personally I wanted a bit more. I wanted a bit more explanation, especially right after saying you're lowering payroll again after such a low payroll last year as well. So those are pretty much the main takeaways. Tim Wakefield stuff was absolutely incredible. Hearing the stories from Pedro, Poppy, Veritek, Pap himself. The video was, was emotional, it was awesome. It was exactly what I wanted and it was, it was absolutely incredible. I'm excited to see sort of what the rest of the day looks like. And overall, I think this was an interesting event, and I would say it was a success, but again, I would have loved to have heard more from the guys in charge of this team, because I think, honestly, that's what everyone cares about right now, and I think fans had all their right to do what they did while they, while they were up on stage, the booing, the yelling. I think at this point, someone needs to answer these questions. All right, so we're here with Jemai Webster. Of course, you know him from Nesson. I just have one question to ask Jemai. You saw what happened tonight. What'd you think? I thought it was incredible. I yeah. mean, it was, uh, it really touched on every emotion that you kind of have, kind of a full day to go back to uh, a famous speech by Jim Valvano several years ago. If you laugh, you cry, you know what I mean? That's a full day. So to be able to do that, I thought it was, it was great and it was well done. And I mean, Pat, he's going to take all our jobs here pretty soon. He's an excellent host, very engaging, and uh, it was fun. Yeah. Fun to watch. All right, well, I appreciate it. I don't want to take up it, too much of your time. So thank you so yeah, much, man. You. It was nice meeting you. All right, so we finally made it back to our room after a great dinner at the Red Rose. Again, huge thank you to Jemai for taking a second to answer one of my questions. I really appreciate it. I'm not going to rehash my thoughts on the actual event itself as I gave my initial reaction about it after the event. But I will say, I think looking back on it, now that I've had a little bit of time to digest, last year was a bit more put together. I think more stuff, more sustenance came out of last year's event. This one was a lot more entertaining to watch, but there wasn't as much actual substance to the event itself. So I think that's sort of my big takeaway to this. I think my two big takeaways from day one, 
Tristan Casas truly becoming a leader of this team. And Tim Wakefield was an absolutely incredible person, but I think we all already knew that. We're gonna hit the hay, but tomorrow, we're gonna be doing some player interactions, getting some autographs, some pictures taken, all that good stuff. Hopefully, there's some surprise interviews tomorrow as well. But honestly, I don't know at this point, so I guess we're gonna have to wait and see. All right, we are officially here. We made it to day two. It was a bit of a rough morning for us. We found out it was going to be a high of 13 degrees today, and there's no hot water in this hotel. So not exactly the greatest start in the world, but either way, we are up bright and early. We got our first panel to go to, and that's where we're gonna go to first in this video. It's gonna be all the prospects, which is gonna be a ton of fun. That's probably the most excited thing I am ready to see for day two. We've also got our autograph sessions. We've got a 2004 20 year reunion which could, should be a ton of fun. And obviously we got hopefully some interesting, surprising things along the way as well. So we're gonna grab some breakfast, head over to the Mass Mutual Center, and I will see you there. I was not kidding about the cold. It was really cold. Either way, this is the first thing on the docket in day two. Marcelo Meyer, Kyle Teal, Nick York, Roman Anthony all sat down, talked to everybody. This might have been my favorite part of the entire event. Listening to these guys talk was absolutely incredible and got me really excited about what the future of the Red Sox could be. They seemed a lot older than they actually were. I would just like say that there's pressure. And to respond to that, like no pressure, no diamonds, you know? You gotta embrace the pressure, you gotta love the pressure. And uh, at the end of the day, like, that's what it's all about. We just finished up with my, the top prospect panel, basically. It was a ton of fun. I think the Red Sox leaning into the fact that they're not going to make a ton of additions this year and having these guys get to know fans and have the fans get to know these guys is a really smart idea. I thought it was really cool to hear from them, not just about baseball, but the camaraderie. I think that's going to be such an underrated aspect of what this team's going to look like by 2026. Honestly, I really enjoyed that panel. I thought it was a ton of fun. We've got, I don't know, about an hour. We're going to walk around a little bit, see what we can see, and then we're going to go into our first autograph session. So our first autograph session of the day, Marcelo, Lou Maloney, and Johnny Gomes. I got to be honest with you, I had a plan going up there, and then I got a little bit starstruck, and I completely lost my words. You'll be able to see in this next interaction, but not exactly the smoothest I've ever been, I'll be honest with you. Like a thousand stickers, I was there for like four days. So I was like, I'm definitely shining up his signature. <laughs> the MMT. So why, everyone says it looks like a T. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Radio, you follow me up. Yeah. How you doing? Good. Red Sea Radio. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 There we go. Honestly, the Lou Maloney interaction and Johnny Gomes interaction really wasn't that much better. I don't know. I don't know what happened, to be honest with you. I don't. I have no idea. Hopefully, that wasn't too cringy for you guys to watch, and I apologize if it was. But as they say, the show must go on. And the next stop we had was the 2004 reunion with Poppy, Pedro, and Tech. So I'm going to throw a couple of clips in here as well for this one. Ladies and gentlemen, Dave Ortiz. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Pedro Martinez. Again, I wish I could show you guys everything, but I can't. It's just there's so much stuff and there's so much copyright stuff I don't want to get in the mix of. But basically, this was essentially just them rehashing 2004, talking about everything. One thing I thought that was really cool that was sort of a theme from the older players this entire weekend was the concept of camaraderie and culture over analytics and all that stuff. And I thought that was an interesting way of looking at it because it does kind of feel like the Red Sox have lost their culture a little bit with everyone that's come and gone over the last five years so it's cool to see these
these older players, really sort of highlighting that, hopefully instilling that in some of the younger players coming up. The next item on the agenda was to head over to our next autograph session, which ended up being Nick Pavetta. And this time I actually got up the courage to ask an actual question. So this one's a little bit better than the last one. And I hope you guys enjoy this interaction. How you doing, Nick? Good, how are you? Good. I got, okay. Yeah, yeah, you're good. I gotta ask, why is the slider called the Swirly Bird? Or the Whirly it's Bird. It's Bird, and I don't know, it's just a, somebody else made up that it's, name, and it just sounds fun. It's good. awesome. Yeah, good luck care, this man. season. Fred Lynn may have genuinely been one of the nicest people I met there. After this, we headed back to the main area here, and uh, I heard the Red Sox were doing open pitching tryouts, so I gave my hand. What do you guys think? Should I be starting opening day? All right, I just want to preface this by saying I haven't done a baseball in 10 years. Goal's going to hit 60. That's what I'm going for. Sixty first try. Let's try and go up. We got 60 on the first try. Let's see if we get higher. Cool. Ah, last one. We gotta blow it out on this one, I think. My arm hurts, so this will be interesting. All right, we got over 60. Thanks, I'm good, thank you. Ow. Yeah, I don't think my future's in Major League Pitching either. Either way, after this, I signed my first ever autograph, which was a surreal experience. Shout out to Austin. You guys may recognize him from last year or this channel for coming up and saying hi. Also, shout out to everyone who came up. I wrote some of the names down. If I missed you, I'm so sorry. Luke, Hurricane Rain, Fred and Devin, Jay Big Boy, Adam and his dad as well. You guys were absolutely incredible to talk to. Thank you so much for coming up to me. Truly means the world for your support. And hey, that signature, not too bad, to be honest with you. I thought it was going to come out a lot worse. We made it here. We're in the re replica of the Red Sox dugout. We got game used jerseys, knee pads, all sorts of bats and whatnot. Just wanted to give you guys a quick recap of what we've done over today. We got the Nick Pavetta autograph, which was incredible. I hope that audio comes out all right. Uh, we also got Marcelo Meyer, which I think might have been best case scenario for autographs. Uh, met Lou Maloney. We got in for the 04 panel, which was absolutely incredible. Hearing the stories of Pedro, Poppy, tech all this stuff about wake is always incredible as well um, so it's been a super jam-packed day it was fantastic getting to see all you guys we're going to try and see if we can get any information from lenny Donardo or tom karen but they're pr they're pretty busy today and i uh i don't want to mess with them too much so we'll see if we can get anything else but if we don't i just want to give you guys a quick debrief of what has happened so far today and uh we got a pretty cool spot to do it in of course, Lenny DiNardo agreed to an interview once again for the vlog, second year in a row, because he's just the nicest person in the world. We're going to show that in just a second, but we're also going to show I got the opportunity to interview Alex Spear, which personally for me was really incredible. I've been looking up to Alex since I've thought about doing anything like this. It's been Alex has been a staple of Red Sox reporting for years, so being able to talk to him about this event and the players on this team was incredible. Let's show those back to back. All right, so we're back once again, year two, and we get Lenny DiNardo back on the vlog. Lenny, real quick, when you look at the sort of pitching staff as it is right now, as a former pitcher, a big leaguer, what do you think as a whole they need to work on going into 2024? I think the pitcher, the pitchers need to get deeper into games, yeah. right? Going into last season, the bullpen was solid. Jansen, Martin, uh, Whitlock, Hauk, maybe those guys are going to contribute mid-innings. But they can't do their job when they're throwing the bulk of the right, games. The right. starters have to go out those six or seven innings and let them maybe take care of two or three at the most, yeah. right? When the starters are averaging less than five innings per game throughout the 162 game schedule, yeah. right? right? That means the bullpen's throwing difficult. more innings than the starters Boys, oftentimes, yeah. right? So uh, if the starters can go deeper into games, it's gonna allow the bullpen to do their job consistently and have sufficient rest to go out uh, throughout the 162 game schedule. Yeah, and then just one more. Sure. Um, what do you think about, you know, sort of what Andrew Bailey and Craig Breslow philosophy is about the pitching staff going into 24. Do you like it? Is it something you're behind? Or? So I, I know those guys from a long time ago. I was yeah. Breslow's throwing partner in Boston 2006 right. and I remember Andrew when we were both with the A's That's back awesome. I can't remember the year maybe 2010 and uh, you're talking about two really bright individuals who can bring some of the new school into the game yeah. but still the old school as well. You know Andrew scuffled with injuries so he knows how to rebound from that uh, bouncing back from adversity. Yeah. Breslow wasn't a hard throwing pitcher so he had to learn how to go out and get guys out a different way similar to myself. So uh, 
with that said, I think they're going to bring some new school, some old school approaches to getting these guys geared up and where they need to be during the season. Yeah, well, sounds perfect to me. And again, I thank you for your time. My I didn't pleasure. Want to take too much yeah. out of it. Thank take you care. again. Thank you. Have a great yeah. one. Yeah. So my question is, with the young core that's coming up with the Red Sox and the sort of expectations this organization's already putting on them, how do you think that sort of affects the fan base perspective of the prospects as they come up? And how do you think that affects the prospects themselves? I think that it does two things in terms of the fan base. It creates considerable excitement for who they can be as they're coming up. Yeah. And then it creates grounds for considerable disappointment <laughs> right. as they reach the majors. Like you think back to the 2013, 2014 group yeah. where it was Bogarts and Bradley and they were going to be leading in bets who are going yeah. to be leading the Red Sox into a new generation. They all, so there was this incredible emerging excitement about them, particularly when uh, other elements of the team in 2014 weren't very good. But then it was kind of crushing to them right. um, and to fans when they were not able to perform immediately. Right. So there's pressure that goes yeah. along with that kind of prominence. Um, at the same time, that pressure theoretically might, uh, I'm, there's no proof of it, right? You can like opine that maybe yeah. it accelerates development kind of it gives guys a bit of a callus in yeah. terms of what they have to go through quickly right. and how they have to develop quickly and obviously Xander Bogarts and, uh, yeah. and Mookie Betts and Jackie Bradley Jr. ended up being very good players yeah. who contributed to a lot for the Red Sox. Um, it was interesting to hear Kyle Teal talk about that point during the panel that uh, the, the prospects panel this morning yeah, yeah. and saying uh, you can't get diamonds without pressure. Right. So that was yeah. an interesting perspective was, from a prospect. It was for sure, yeah. Um, so. What do you think the Red Sox end goal is here? Is it to is it to wait for these guys to get up and then supplement them immediately? Or is the goal to get these guys up, see what you have with them, and then start to supplement? Are they gonna try and supplement now and hope? And yeah, make it, it feels easier? like any any supplementing that might be done this offseason is going to be of a relatively modest variety. Yeah. Um, in the past, they in the past they would have been more aggressive in the so-called bridge, mm -hmm. and they're not this off season. Yeah, clearly, um, yeah. So whether or not that represents a philosophical change or something else, I, I can't say. Mm -hmm. um, but for now, it's uh, it. Well, also those prospects aren't graduating to the big leagues right, yet, right? Yeah. So they're largely going to be running it back again with guys who have slightly more major league experience, um, and we'll see where that goes. But um, it's it's been an an off-season that hasn't been, that is unlike any that we've seen in the last 20 years. One more huge thank you to both Lenny DiNardo and Alex Spear for taking time out of their insanely busy days to sit with me out of everybody to ask questions for, and I, I truly, truly am appreciative of that. Overall, looking back on Winter Weekend, I know a lot of what came out in terms of quotes from ownership and management weren't, literally not a single one of them was a positive one. They did themselves no favors this weekend and certainly deserve the boost. I know that's what a lot of people are going to talk about, but if you are a diehard Red Sox fan and you are ever in this area, I highly recommend going to this event. It is a ton of fun. The ability to see past, present, and future players of the Boston Red Sox all in one place, them getting to talk really in depth about stuff, seeing them in another light, all this great stuff, meeting fellow Red Sox fans. It was just an absolutely incredible weekend. Thank you to everyone in this video. Of course, thank you to my girlfriend for everything she did for this video. Let me know what you think about this type of video in the comment section down below. Should I do more vlogs like this in the future or should I just stick to what I'm best at which is sitting behind this desk and talking socks so let me know all your thoughts on the 2024 winter weekend in the comment section down below thank you all very much for clicking on this one and I will see you in the red seats